Uh, Ram Didimo, uh, I don't think you've been properly introduced in the King of the Ring setting before, right? You've uh, you've been on the stage, but not in the eight man tournament. Like coming in this week, uh, how has preparation changed because you have potentially three fights rather than the one? Um, yeah, just trying to fight three people as opposed to one person now. I guess, yeah, I don't know to be honest. I just there's a formula that the team have at, at the gym and I just follow that formula, you know. It's already made multiple champions in the past. So yeah. How different is that formula to I guess what you would do through a normal fight camp? <clears throat> um top secret. Top secret, you know what I mean? I, uh, we like to keep we like to keep our information indoors, so yeah. I'm gonna just keep that card to my chest. Fair enough, fair enough. Coming in, uh, fighting in an eight-man tournament, this will be your first one. Um, just, just what are the thoughts going into to this? You know, um, sometimes I like I think to myself, like, what the fuck? I'm going to fight three people in one night. That's crazy, you know? That's crazy. But, yeah, to be honest, I haven't really thought about it too much because, like, I've heard – multiple fighters in the past like nav cam israel they all said the same thing it's like you can't focus on the three fights you got to take every fight individually so that's like so I, I haven't even thought about the other two the first person i fight is the person i'm fighting you know whoever's in front of me is who i'm fighting whatever comes after that it is what it is you know my man smart man best way to approach these things i think not that i've ever yeah. done it myself but it seems <laughs> like the logical approach i was gonna say i was gonna say how many how many fights in that <laughs> <laughs> no i don't think i'll be getting getting back in the ring anytime soon um in terms of you the, never know. Never know. the in terms of the king in the ring this week it, it looks like you know there's a bit of a a shift to the younger generation starting to come through yourself and Asha Abadi kind of among those you got um yeah. Squirt on the card as well like two really young girls fighting and Caden Skipper as well who is also very yeah. young yeah I guess what does it say about the the current state of combat sports in New Zealand I mean yeah like what can I say to be honest like they're here you know um names like Asha Asha's um, he's already won King of the Ring, if I'm not wrong. Um, he's been a, a big name in New Zealand for a while now, from what I've been told. So, yeah, I feel like um, I feel like <clears throat> from the success of the boys from the gym and all over New Zealand, I feel like it's like it's done something in New Zealand where now, and even Australasia, where everyone's kind of put their foot on the gas, you know, like all the all the younger generations, like yo. If these guys can do it, they've shown us, they've opened the way, they've led the way, so fuck it. Let's just follow them and just, yeah. And I think that's what's happening, you know? Tell us a little bit about your journey. I know um, reading the King in the Ring little blurb they did with you, you kind of started in 2018. I remember seeing you in the crowd in Melbourne at an open workout, um, looking back at the videos, you know, you had the, the forehead protector on, okay. Izzy saw that. Um is that kind of how you came to be at City Kickboxing? Like, how did that whole thing play out? Um, yeah, I don't know. You believe in God, the universe, or whatever higher power you want to believe in. But whatever it was, I'm just going to say God for now. I feel like God made it happen like... um. The first ever combat sports event I ever went to was back in 2017. And I was sitting there and I was watching all these people fight. And I always used to think that I could fight. I'm like, yeah, I could fuck everyone up. You know what I mean? I'll take everyone out. Still do. But um, yeah, I was a bit delusional back then. I thought I could, you know, I, I thought I didn't need to train. I thought I could just see someone, take them out. Then I started watching all these fights. And then um, slowly I was like, nah, fuck this. Like, these guys are all crazy. They all just beating the shit out of each other. Jimmy Crew fought. Um, I can't remember who he fought, but it was just like a war. And I was like, okay, I can't fight these motherfuckers. They're crazy. Like you know, I'm a skinny black guy. I can't. I can't do this shit. <clears throat> and then Israel came out, and I was like, that motherfucker. 
that motherfucker kind of looks like me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he kind of, the sound, that motherfucker kind of reminds me of me. You know what I mean? And then um, I seen his opponent, and his opponent looked huge compared to him. And I was like, I love my guy, but God, that motherfucker looks huge. And then Israel, Israel beat the fuck out of him. I was like, oh. Kind of showed me, like, um, yeah, it was like, and it wasn't the fact that he was fighting. It was just like, it was like art. I don't know how to explain it. Like, it was just art. That's what I saw. It was just like art. He used art to beat up this guy. I'm like, yo. So I went, talked to him, talked to the Vake fam. Um, none of the boys remember this. None of them. I, I'm, I'm sure none of them remember it. I got a photo of it now. I went up and I was just like, yo, can I take a photo with you guys? Blah, blah, blah. This was like ages ago. Then a couple years later, he's in the UFC. And I was like, oh, that's that. That's that. That's that black guy I was telling you guys about. That's that's that Israel guy I was telling you guys about. Then boom, boom, boom. Then once again, God, the universe, whatever, brought them to Melbourne again. And then, yeah, I don't know. It just felt like I was being pulled towards this direction. And then, fuck, here I am. So, yeah. If I remember right, I might be off here, but I remember Izzy signing some gloves and passing them out into the crowd. Did you get those or did someone else get those? Nah, that was his his now um video editor, Stay Hydrated. Um, Luca, he got them. So fuck the universe pulled him there too. So yeah. The crazy how things work like that. Eh? I wonder yeah. if he's still got those gloves. Because that's what I was gonna ask you if you still have them. No, you, you gotta do an interview with him. You gotta <laughs> you gotta ask him. Yeah, you're gonna I'm have sure to. Like, so you were in Melbourne at that time. When did you come over to New Zealand? Like how soon after? I think that was in 2019, the silver fight, yeah. right? Yeah. So it was the silver fight. And then um, I remember I talked to Eugene. I was like, Eugene, I want to come to the gym. And I could just tell that um, he's probably heard that like a billion times from people all over the world. So he gave me like, the, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like almost like I've heard this before. I was like, yeah. But I was like, I was, I was dead, I was dead set on it. Like I wanted to go to New Zealand. I just had to figure out some shit. And then, um, time had gone past. Time had gone past, and then he came and fought in Melbourne again against Rob Whitaker. Um, Happy Australia Day. Um, <clears throat> he came and fought Rob Whitaker again, and then um, that's when I was like, okay, cool. The first time it was like a message. Uh, I I heard it, but I was like, mm. second time it was like an even bigger message. I heard it. I was like, mm. the third time, I was like, all right, all right, I hear you, I hear you. I said, fuck it, let's just go. Then, um, yeah, after, uh, no, sorry, actually, the third time was the Rob Whitaker message. Like, after the Rob Whitaker fight, I was like, okay, this is a message. Like, I have to go to these people. And I heard it, and I was like, fuck, yeah, yeah. And then UFC Auckland was like, the, okay, like, God, the universe knows I'm an idiot. Like I don't. It takes me like a while to pick up on shit. So it's like, here, motherfucker. Like here, go. I was like, right, but, and then I went. Yeah, here we are. So did you kind of get stuck over here because of COVID? Nah. So COVID happened, and then I went back home because money was low. I was running low on money. I didn't know how fucking bad shit was going to be. And like, all my family's back in Melbourne. So I was like, oh, yeah. Then I went back home. Then I came back. Then COVID again. Come back. Then I went back home. Then come back. Yeah. For people who haven't seen you fight, how would you explain yourself to them? <clears throat> um... How would I explain myself to people who haven't seen me fight? To be honest, I don't even know. I don't even know. I feel like it's pretty random. Like, it just depends. It's just random. I can't even explain it because I don't even I don't even know what the fuck's going on, to be honest. Like, I feel like I'm still getting used to and comfortable with the experience of being in the ring and, like, fighting people and shit. But, yeah, I don't know. But I just go out there... Uh, the fuck just kind of picking up on that um still feeling comfortable with you know getting the experience and fighting people and stuff like at this point in your career like 
what what are your kind of goals and, and plans for the next two or three years? Yeah, I just know I'm gonna go far. I, that's that's one thing I can say. I know I'm gonna go far. I know I know this is what I'm meant to be doing. I know this is what I'm meant to be doing, and I know I'm gonna go far. But it's just the journey, like falling. I, I feel like I've started to fall in love with the journey again. You know what I mean? And yeah, that's all I can really focus on right now. What's next? I can't. I know where I'm gonna be. I've seen it. I swear to God, I've seen it. But now it's just like. Enjoy now. Enjoy the moment now. Enjoy what the fuck's going on now. Even these interviews and shit. Like, I don't even feel comfortable, like, doing all this, but fuck it, you know? Honestly, man, no, no, one, no one would know you didn't feel comfortable doing an interview. You, you're natural. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> In terms of, I guess, the, the next generation coming through, how important are shows like King in the Ring, like Shuriken Fight mm -hmm. Series for the MMA guys, like giving you guys a platform for like high level competition in the regional scene. Yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Um I was talking to one of the bros about it the other day. I was like, um Shuriken, King of the Ring, um Art of War, shows like that, they've been around since like way before. Like all the people that we look up to, they've all fought on these shows, you know, these these promoters, Jason Jason, um, two Jasons, there's two Jasons, Tony, um, all these promoters, like they've been they've been giving our favorite fighters, the people who inspired us platforms since way back, you know what I mean? And they're still doing it to this day, purely for the love of the game. So like <clears throat> as a member of like the fight community here in Australasia, I'm like, yo, we gotta be we gotta like salute to them, you know what I mean? Shout out to them, because they're they're the ones that are giving people like me. An opportunity to express myself and show my art, you know what I mean. So, yeah, I, I, to be honest, I don't have words. I don't even have words to like to speak on it. But fuck, they've done they've done something that's just as amazing as as capturing a world title. You know what I mean? They've built platforms for average people like like me and the next guy. You know what I mean? So yeah, shout out to them. Hey man, and I guess just lastly, um. Another thing I picked up from that little Q&A you did with King in the Ring on Instagram, you said uh, Dan Hooker would be the guy to play you in a movie. Why? He's like, he's a psychopath, man. Dan, if you're watching this, don't, hey, Dan, 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 don't kick my ass, bro. I'm just, don't kick my ass, but that guy's a psychopath, you know? And a part of me can resonate with that. You know what I mean? I don't think a lot of people have seen him, but yeah. Yeah. That's what we I'm going to say on that. We can start a campaign, get Dan Hooker to Hollywood. Yeah. Please. Please. Oh, good, man. Well, I'll uh, leave it at that and let you get back to your day. Thank you very much for the time and uh, everyone watching King in the Ring this Saturday, 2nd of December in Auckland. You can watch it on TVNZ Duke. Or I think there's a live stream for the people overseas who can buy it on pay-per-view. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Have fun out there. Easy. Thank you, Chris.